Hey, what's good my people? We are definitely back again for another one on this year, Mr. X Reaction. Guys, for this year vlog, we're gonna be talking about Rosie Douglas. Of course, 20 years has passed since he was late to rest, guys. I remember that like just the other day, man. And the amount of people that were there, guys, people from all over the world were there to send Rosie, Doug, um, Rosie off 20 years ago, man. The question here I really want to set in people's minds as a precedence to what Rosie stood for. Can we say that we are seeing that here today? Can we say from all the things that he's going to be, well, we'll be watching here today. Can we say that we have made that stride that Rosie really wanted? You know, we are a strong advocate for people, black people especially, and of course for people generally. And we want to see how that development has happened. We're gonna be going, we're gonna be going back, um, way back, way way back, brothers and sisters, even before Dominica became independent. <laughs> um, to that regard, where Rosie was doing his thing as well. But let us get into that vibrations right there, guys. RBD named his second son. By the way, RBD is Rosie Douglas' father. For the president. The kids he takes down to the beach call him Rosie. Rosie is 36 now. Every Sunday morning he can be found under the almond tree at the beach at Portsmouth. Guys, you can see Rosie Douglas in his young, vibrant self, man. I never remembered him like that. I remember him being bigger. But Rosie, he definitely was a family and people person. You can pretty much tell by the way he used to play with the youth Sunday. And the comfortability factor that parents had with him around their children. But Rosie was much more deeper than that, guys. Rosie, a Sir George graduate on a master's at McGill, helps organize a computer center sit-in. Tension builds as the occupation at Sir George continues. Rosie contacts John Diefenbaker. Well, I phoned Diefenbaker because... Uh, the former Prime Minister had helped Rosie get into Canada to study. Rosie reciprocated by working for the Diefenbaker Tories. Now Diefenbaker advises the university to let them freeze in the dark. If students occupy any section of the building during winter, they should turn the heat off and let them freeze to death. That's what the professor said. By the way, guys, before we continue, the whole context right there is that Rosie Douglas was brought or, or sent on a scholarship to Canada for where he was able to study a number of things. I think his father was one of those who wanted him to study agriculture and he studied political science and so forth and so forth. However, during that time, there was um, in a different school, there was a bit of a situation taking place where a professor was grading black Caribbean students but kept failing them all the time. And students kept wondering what exactly was going on. Why this white professor kept failing them. Even though some of the white students would literally copy off the black Caribbean students work. Change the words a little. Some of them being word for word. But the, the professor would definitely fail the black Caribbean students. So this whole thing came about and they were wondering what exactly was going on. And the black students wanted um, that teacher to be fired. But the, the staff or the whole professor, um, not professor, you know, but the whole, um, the colleagues of that professor were protecting that professor from being fired, even down to the very dean that was protecting this guy from being fired. The racism that was going on, especially against Caribbean people, and Rosie Douglas being some in some other school, was one of those who helped in ensuring that, that he, was, he would jump on board and be with the individuals right there to fight against that very thing. So he was in another school, but then ended up coming into that to ensure that he could help in this regard right there. Well, that's what I understood from, from the documentaries that I actually saw. I am saying that we have to prepare ourselves to use any means necessary to seek our liberation, to seek our liberation from white domination. Generations mourn the lack of leadership as if Canada had no worthy black heroes. Rosie Douglas was our fearless rebel. Rosie emerged as one of those leaders, if you will, who was not shy or unwilling to take on the Canadian government and the Canadian state. He said, our struggle is to make the lives of ordinary people better and valued. He was part of blazing the trail and linking for us a worldwide black Pan-African movement. To fight or not to fight, 
What do you accept? And at what point do you rebel? Oh, beautifully stated, guys. To fight or not to fight. When injustices are being taken, and when, when they are happening to different people, when, when people are being victimized, when a number of things are being happening to people where they are not equal to other folks, to fight... Oh, let me, let, me, let me bring that back. Let me bring that back, brother. Or not to fight. What do you accept? And at what point do you rebel? To fight or not to fight. What do you accept? And at what point do you rebel against that very thing, man? Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. What we call from the Caribbean, being bold-faced. White people go into the Caribbean, they spread, we spread the red carpet for them in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. When we come here, you don't treat us as dogs. No. Why are you so involved with Canada and the co problem of the colored people here? Well, first of all, I am a black man. And if there are black people here, I am going to be involved in fighting with black people. That is exactly what he did right there, guys. He heard about the whole situation involved with the black people, the black Caribbean people more specifically, who got scholarships to go and study in Canada. And realized that what was happening was not fair at all. <laughs> Rosie jumped on board with it, man. Further, having been born in the Caribbean, an area where the Canadian people are exploiting in the most vicious and blatant form, it is my responsibility while I'm here to expose this type of exploitation. Expose it! Further, having been born in the Caribbean, an area where the Canadian people are exploiting in the most vicious and blatant form, it is my responsibility while I'm here to expose this type of exploitation. And he's talking about Canada, where they're exposing. Boy, I tell you, Rosie, was something else there. The Rose Do Rosie Douglas case began in 1969. This is what Rosie helped to think, you know, guys. This is what Rosie helped to ensure that black people were not being taken advantage of. In all fairness, there must be some form of fairness. When it comes down to the elevation of black people and doing what is right by right for right for the people, man. I'm at Sir George Williams University in Montreal. In February of that year, about 100 people, most but not all of them students, barricaded themselves in the university's computer center. But Mr. George Williams, it started from a slow burn, but when it caught fire, it was catastrophic in a whole lot of ways. Now, this story is a bit interesting to understand because they jumped a lot of things. Now, based on the actual documentary that I saw, the burning of the buildings was not, it was not anything that the, the students wanted to do. The students wanted the, the professor to then be fired or for him to be removed or something like that. But the, the, the whole, um, the association was protecting him. And when they felt like they got a leeway for them to finally, you know, when they started you know being told when they were being told the different lies by the professor as if they felt like they were getting somewhere they realized that they were being lied to the students realized that they were being lied to because they locked themselves in the rooms in the in the computer rooms they had there was no destruction nothing like that they locked themselves they stayed in there for a number of days people were bringing stuff for them whatnot and um they the, 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 the association, the, the school association finally told them, okay, yes, this is going to take place, this is what's going to happen, and so forth and so forth. But when they came out, they realized that they, that, that they were pretty much being lied to, right? So they decided, you know what, let's go back inside there again and do that. And some of the students, the white students that were also part of this, they are the ones who pretty much set this stuff on fire and this thing went out of control like crazy because they were fed up because they were being lied to, they said that something was being done, nothing was being done. It was just a trick to fool them to get out of the, the, the place. And then this escalated to where they started burning down stuff all over the place right there in the computer rooms. Right? And, and then, so. so that's the context. They were protesting the alleged racism of a university lecturer. And what started as a peaceful protest turned into a rampage with the occupants setting the building on fire and attacking the computers with axes. Robert. There was also another thing right there stating that they were infiltrators. Um, so while the students did not burn anything down or they were not causing any harm, in the, uh, havoc in the place, they were pretty much cleaning the place and ensuring that everything was okay. They stated that there could have been infiltrators that went into the um, thing to cause this kind of chaos. It's interesting how this works. They send in individuals to create havoc in this whole situation. So it looks like the students as a unit are the ones creating this thing. 
It's only later on they found out that there could have been some infiltrators inside there that caused this kind of disruption, making things elevate even to a, to another level right there, guys. So be mindful that that same thing kind of reminds me of what took place in Rosu, guys, with the whole situation of, of them burning, sending, burning buildings and, 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 and this kind of things there when um, UWP had their rallies and stuff. Um, after it, it was in the night time where folks decided to go and break things and go into places and all this kind of something there there could have been infiltrators in there as well and if you understand how the society works and understand how different things can happen then it then looks like it's the very people who had the protest the peaceful protest by the way it then looks like it was them that created this but there are infiltrators in this thing up to now, they brought some of these individuals, including Lennox, Linton, and a number of others, to court. And not one person was charged as a result of that. Interesting. Anyways. Roosevelt Douglas was one of them. He served two years in a medium security prison. He's from jail. He's made a full-time career as a militant black power advocate. Hands up, Rosie Hands up, Rosie now guys, keep in mind, this is 1976. This was the part where they were pretty much um, trying to deport him and the people were trying to prevent him from being deported. So they were, you know, advocating for him not to get deported. To Toronto ...and started to stop the deportation of Rosie Douglas movement. Defend Rosie Douglas. This is where he rose to prominence in the black community. One of the things, for instance, um, that came out of all of this movement was the development of the transitional year program at U of T. That was Rosie. That began with Rosie. I think they're trying to deport Rosie because he's been a consistent struggle against imperialism all the time he's been here. He's been outspoken. He's been a leader. And I think they're trying to silence him. This is a leader that we have to write down in history that spans not only in terms of Toronto, Canada, across the globe and then coming back to his home country. And even though he's passed, there are monuments in that country recognizing that what he did spanned the globe. My question here is, from what he did back then, coming back to Dominica, is what we're seeing right now really something of the fight that Rosie Douglas had for the people? Not just in, in um, Canada, but for people generally. And we're gonna be going to Dominica to see that vibrations right there you see the fight is not an individual fight in other words the assassination of, of malcolm x or martin luther king uh did not end the black struggle indeed nope. it took it to a higher level that's true 100 percent true out of prison rosie was a changed if not chastened man but the rcf so while they sent it's interesting eh <laughs> so while they sent rosie into prison to try to break him that kind of fueled that fire in him so much that he ended up even pushing that vibes into Dominica. Now, now you guys know the whole story with Rosie um, being a part of the African movement, the liberation of that, you know, again, some apartheid and this kind of things there. You know about Cuba, you know about a number of things where Rosie was fighting for the people. But this one we're leading into is indeed Dominica. And he regarded him as dangerous and in 1976 had him deported. Rosie lost 65 pounds. So this is him in Dominica right there. Pounds in a Canadian jail. He served a year and a half. Well, I go back to Dominica, the island I was born. Uh, the thing is, my life will always be threatened there because of the barbaric kind of laws, the, the almost medieval laws which have been passed in Dominica. Mr. Douglas sent Rosie to Ontario. No, Mr. Douglas they're talking about there is Rosie's father. That's who they're talking about right now. Bales Guelph University to get a degree in agriculture. Rosie got the degree, but came back and organized his father's workers into a union. <laughs> having got... <laughs> Don't play Rosie. <laughs> Rosie, check it. What? <laughs> that he sent me to God's study. I also heard it was a Canadian that also helped him to go up there as well. And the Prime Minister that helped him to go and study as well. But they sent him up there to go and study. And then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> and organize his father's workers into a union. Thousand hmm. dollars in debt to pay some of Rosie's legal expenses. Mr. Douglas was not amused. Rosie, we're here right in the middle of your father's estate. There's acres of bananas and coconut. What would you do if, if he were able to leave it to you? Would you give it away to the workers? Well, I wouldn't give it away, but I would try to develop it in a manner which would allow the workers on the estate 
to enjoy a decent standard of living. The island is... I like that fact. Let, let, let's bring it back. The workers on the estate to enjoy a decent standard of living. The island is locked into a one-crop economy, selling all to a big British banana corporation. The yes. small grower earns six cents a pound, or less than two dollars for a 35-pound bunch. Dominica is an associate state, soon to be independent from Britain. So, you see, that's what I was talking about a while ago. What she is in reality is a banana republic. The situation is ripe for radicalism, and in a place called Grand Bay, the drums beat out a song against the CIA. Here, the most successful slave uprisings occurred, and recently, a plantation owner was burned out. Because of its radical tradition, Rosie made his headquarters in Grand Bay. Hmm, so Rosie was inspired in Grand Bay. That's what's up. With moral support from the Cuban government, Rosie is organ Fidel Castro. <laughs> organizing hard around gut issues, setting up a canning cooperative and a literacy project. The marketplace of Portsmouth on a Saturday is... So guys, it doesn't really look much different. The, mar the marketplace in Portsmouth, this is pretty much what it looks like. This is the Gazibu area where they're trying to cramp everybody in. There's not much development. These things are pretty much broken down. But when it comes down to the whole um, 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 scope of Portsmouth in itself, guys, this thing is pretty much the same. The activity is people flock here to buy fresh provisions like mangoes and breadfruit. It's pretty much the same. This house is still there, guys. This house. <laughs> I think that's the house I saw now. Well, this house, I think, I can remember this house, man. And this is like back in 1976, man. 1977, 1970, 1978, around there. The Douglas family dominates here as they do everywhere else in Portsmouth. This area, this area, however, is changed, has changed. They have the store next door to the marketplace where they sell canned goods and liquor. What helps Rosie run are checks, like the hundred dollars he gets every month from a sympath Easy. Pathetic Saskatchewan doctor. Rosie saves money by living at home, even though his father sent him a lawyer's letter ordering him out after Rosie or... <laughs> RBD organized the Douglas workers. The family's Easter picnic was Mr. Douglas' first afternoon off in years. He's 72. Grandson of a freed slave, at 23 he made one dollar a day and somehow saved seven hundred dollars in two years. He bought land and never looked back. All of us at one time or another, all of us, at 16 of us in the family, have worked with the old man from time to time. In one form or another, either on the estate or in building the cinema or on the farm or in the business, what happened? And we've all tended to stray away. Were things very difficult for you? Oh, very difficult in the beginning. You know, things were hard. But, you know, working all the time, making children working all the time. Rosie, who was in jail in Canada. Yes, I was very much depressed. Why? Because see, he's in jail. I mean, it must make you feel bad, eh? I agree. Understanding that you send your child to study, your child got scholarships or whatever to go and study. And you know your child is in jail. That's that's really not what you catered for, man. That's really not what you catered for. Especially understanding your child has the opportunity to then make something better for themselves overseas and also could contribute back into Dominica um, by that by that by that extension. So I mean, as a mother, you always want to ensure that your child is is, is safe. I mean, going to jail is not anything nice for any mother. But guys, if you look at the greatest of men out there. Jesus Christ was in jail, you know. Jesus Christ was in jail. You have um, Samson was in jail. You have, looking at now, Martin Luther King. You had Malcolm X. You had um, the African leader, um, Nelson Mandela. You had a number of great people in jail. Understanding that going to jail was as a result of rebelling against a system that was meant to oppress the people. Interesting. Rosie Douglas was also in jail for fighting for the rights of black people. Not something bad that he did, but he was fighting for the rights and betterment for black people. If none of these things were happening, you would think Rosie Douglas would need to go to jail. If people were, weren't ill-treating Ill people or trying to keep people oppressed, you think that Rosie Douglas would go to jail? No. But there's a reason why some people need to tend to stand up. And it's not just one set. Because obviously Rosie Douglas had a plethora of people around him that would definitely have caused a major move. You check? That is what happened right there. So as a mother, of course you'll feel a kind of a way, but you have to feel proud of your son. Because your son helped change a lot of things, especially when it comes down to the oppression against black people. Your son changed a lot of things, man. So you have to be proud.
Did you feel disgraced? Or? No, I didn't feel disgraced. I was feeling bad, really bad. Crying all the time, sometimes by myself. And I go to church, I pray a lot. And I My dog lasts. <laughs> I've got for strength, I pray for him. The last load from the countryside is being washed and boxed for shipment. The manager is one of dozens of Dominicans Rosie arranged to visit Cuba to see socialism firsthand. For a while, Rosie's Cuban junkets, arranged and paid for by the Cuban Foreign Ministry, became so popular even the Premier's wife went along. But with independence coming for the island, the governing Labour Party was wary of appearing too leftist. The Premier also had a problem with Rosie's brother Michael, a rising star in the cabinet, openly challenging the Premier's leadership. Michael Douglas. Rosie Douglas is a socialist, and he and his father are at variance dangerously so, so much so that his father has told me to be wary of his son. <laughs> you have to pray Rosie, no Rosie have a movement boy. Hey. Because he's an international opportunist. That's not the case at all. When it comes down to Rosie, he was pretty much just fighting for the rights of black people. Fighting for their betterment on an equal and fair playing field. That was pretty much what, we, what he was doing. As a matter of fact, when I heard of the Premier's remark that there was a, a communist plot to overthrow the government by force, our organization, the Dominica Cuba Friendship Association, wrote a letter to the Premier telling him, in fact, that we are concerned about his allegations and that if such a plot does exist in the country, those involved in it are bordering on conspiring to commit treason and they must be arrested and charged for treason. And he has not arrested anybody and charged him with treason yet. Ruth, duh. <laughs> Uzi Douglas to the people of Dominica is like pointing a red rag before a bull. That's probably where the Labour Party red thing come from. Anyways. And that is the... But, before I continue, the Labour Party of back then and the Labour Party of now is two completely different, massively different um, 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 political um, um, stances. But among the young people, he has made certain strides. Chubby! <laughs> I think that is Chubby, that is Chubby, right? <laughs> Grand me people, big up yourself one time. Do you want to bring the old society tumbling down like this fort? Well, in a sense, I mean, what this represents really is a period of our history. Um, By the way, this is the Carbis National Park. I remember, my goodness, I feel like an old boy. I remember when the Carbis National Park looked like this. I remember. There's a road going straight up there, and then you go on top of this thing, right there, where you see the little um, water thing. That we would like to, to change, and, and upon this ruin is really to build a new society that is able to provide for the people a decent living standard. When you talk about ruins, you're really talking about some kind of violence? Violence only comes when everything else fails. I believe that um, we will be able to go through a peaceful uh, transition in Dominica. Capitalism has served you very well. You're the son of one of the richest people in Portsmouth. You're a child of what you would call the bourgeoisie. Bourgeois. Well, you know, I always, sometimes when I speak to the workers, you know, on my father's estate, that question always comes up. The question is, I mean, is the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the right. dog? So my father really had to struggle against tremendous odds to be able to. That's what some people don't tend to understand. They think money just falls from the sky, back in your lap. Look it, look it there. So when you work hard, hard, brothers and sisters, when you work very, very hard, for people to don't say, oh, just give me, give me something. They don't work hard, you know. They just want you to give them from the hard work that you've done. That, brothers and sisters, is not anything that should happen at all. There are people who are in need, definitely. You have those people. But then when a man is strong and, and strapped and he can do stuff, but he's just lazy, some of them just want women to just feed them. I don't understand this craziness. <laughs> but still, people work hard for their stuff, man. And when you work hard for yourself, nobody help you work hard, you know. Some of them just sit down there and watch you working hard and wait for you to get the money so that they can come and ask you for money. Is that really fair? And this is what I believe Rosie was fighting against because it is working hard, yes, but it is also giving others a fair opportunity to do to also work hard. To get to where he has gotten. Um, but he was able to get to where he got because um, there was an abundance of cheap labor as well. Mm -hmm. So that is taking advantage of the workers, true. And um, by virtue of utilizing that cheap labor, he was able to accumulate enough 
at least to get his own children an education. So while I have a responsibility to him as my father and my family, who I, I try to always give the utmost respect, I also have a responsibility to the workers who produce that wealth, in fact, to enable me to get an education. And that is where elevation comes in, where others working hard, but not taking advantage of the workers and... And to hope that one day that their children will get the same opportunity and more. That... Exactly. <laughs> so everybody works hard, everybody benefits. Everybody is benefiting on an equal playing field. Yes, you own the stuff, but you have to treat your workers well. You have to pay them well. Don't give them little stipends and things just for them to eat. And then they go hungry. And then they work again, they eat, then they go hungry. No, there must be some sort of level of substance for each and every individual. Which brings me to the present situation here today, guys. What is the elevation and standing of the people? Are people getting breadcrumbs? go hungry and then wait for some other breadcrumbs every five years is that the case today brothers and sisters help me know or maybe i don't know help me understand i was able to get when michael douglas was called a communist he said i'm not a communist i'm a catholic and laid the matter to rest rosie wants many things for his island he'd like to see tourists a piano for the choir and more canadian aid he acknowledges his debt to canada Guelph gave him a degree in agriculture he uses to good advantage in his organizing. Sir George gave him a political science degree and a lesson on political violence. Canada's prisons taught him how to survive in a jungle. Hmm. Oh, okay. Now, guys, before you get into the vibrations right there, we are then fast forward in today in terms of the people and the elevation of the people. Are the people really benefiting? What is preventing free and fair vibrations or free and fair elections from taking place to help ensure that the people themselves in the country elevate? There's an important key point that I never really thought, but Rosie thought this out. And this individual is pretty much reiterating that same thing that actually makes sense when it comes down to the overseas voters. Guys, take a, take a, um, take a listen to this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these amendments which are proposed in my respectful view to the extent that they do not address the essential components of free and fair election, the sanitation or the sanitizing of the voters' list, campaign finance reform, to the extent that they do not address these two critical components of electoral reform, uh, I would respect. Oh, sorry. To submit their meaning that. They do not deal with the mischief which has been created in the last few years. In fact, that mischief would continue unabated. And that is why we in Dominic, in so far as those who would hear or an order, are very concerned about the manifestation of electoral reform in Dominica as we speak. I will save my thunder. I will not try to guess what will be proposed by Lord Byron. There will be a time and a place to review what he is proposing. But again, I have indicated clearly what is being done in the Eastern Caribbean by all the governments. There is no ambiguity. There is no ambiguity about the parameters of electoral reform. It doesn't lend itself to any discussion. Rosie Douglas understood the danger of allowing Dominicans abroad, whether or not they met the criteria for voting, to come and master Dominican vote. And that is why he proposed that overseas Dominicans could be allowed to vote in Dominica, but only for two or three seats designated to represent the diaspora. Oh, beautiful, brothers and sisters. Beautiful indeed. Overseas people can definitely come and vote. I think this is the solution right there, guys. This is definitely the solution. Is it, not, it is not preventing overseas people from coming to vote. It is letting overseas people have a specific seat one, two, three seats for themselves. So when they come down to vote, or if they have to send down ballot papers or whatever, they vote amongst themselves. The diaspora votes in the diaspora um, um, constituency. And I guess they will have some representatives as well for them in that, that, that specific two, three seats, whichever it is. So they vote amongst themselves. But they do not affect the rest of the people who actually live in there in the rest of the 21 constituencies, man. You don't bring down people to come and vote in these constituencies. They live in the diaspora. You want to have a voice? Vote amongst diasporans. And if it's labor, freedom, workers, papi, the new team, I forget the name. I don't know what color it is. But hey, if it's for these individuals, then you have a, 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 a say in the, the voting process in Dominica, the elections of Dominica. So you definitely have a say in, in Dominica. 
but not affecting the rest of the country who want to see change. Because it's obvious, and we know, based on the amount of planes that came in, that people were placed in different constituencies to help tilt the scale to the favor of the ruling, ruling team. You cannot tell me you didn't see all those planes that came in, the chartered planes that came in, the millions of dollars that were spent. You cannot tell me that. But that has not happened yet. And this is one of the things that Rosie wanted to see. And so unfortunately, that he did not make it. How long did he serve? I think he served about two and a half years or a year and something. And then Pierre Charles came and he served like two, 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 two and a half or, or two years. And then he himself died. That's crazy. Rosie died. One term, you know, Rosie died. Then your Pierre Charles died. And then Scaro came, Prime Minister. No idea. He stated that because he understood that to allow... Let me bring it back for you guys to understand. Whether or not they met the criteria for voting to come in mass to Dominica. So that is why he proposed that overseas Dominicans could be allowed to vote in Dominica, but only for two or three seats designated to represent the diaspora. He exactly. stated that because he understood that to allow otherwise would be to deprive voters' residents in Dominica True. of the value of their work. 20 years after Rosie died, in fact, the anniversary of his death is Thursday, for God's sake. The mm -hmm. nightmare, in my respectful view, he has envisioned in terms of thousands of illegible voters living abroad, descending on Dominica to vote in constituencies they were directed to. And now we have to wait to see where that takes us in a certain world in terms of democracy and the rule of law. Which brings us here to the guys. Here, this is Vince Henderson, this is Rosie, and this is Skerritt right there, guys. It's interesting to find out that when it comes down to what is taking place right now in Dominica, guys, can we then say that all what Rosie fought for, even bringing, oh my God, Rosie made a union, a workers' union, against his father's own business to help protect the people from being abused. What is happening right now, guys? Can we safely say that we are seeing the evidence of that presently? Can we safely say that we're seeing the rights of people not being violated? Can we safely say that we are not seeing people get victimized? Do you think Rosie right now, if he was alive today, would Rosie would be like, yes, what is happening right now? That is what I fought for. That is what I fought for, guys. Then this next picture comes up right there, guys. The two betrayed Rosie 20 years ago. Do you believe that this picture is true? Can you agree and say, hey, that this is definitely true? Based off what Rosie fought for, all over the world, including in Dominica as well. The rights for and by the people. Guys, what are your thoughts? Man? Leave that, of course, in the comment box below. There's a lot more, guys. This took me like two days to prepare what you've seen right there. So I had a number of things. Guys, I can even go back <laughs> and look at more documents that I actually had. Um, that I would have posted up in there, but I wanted to break it down as short as possible. And this thing is about 30 minutes, man. This is crazy. But I hope you guys understood everything. Please definitely share this year video, guys. And also subscribe to this year channel. If you enjoy vibes like this, guys, let me know. Leave that, of course, in the comment box below. And let me know your thoughts on the whole thing. Do you think that if Rosie was alive today, that he would be happy about what is happening right now for the people? I know one thing you would definitely be happy, be happy for is that the infrastructures that they're building for those who are in need. But the question here is, who is really in need and who is in need are they really getting? Interesting. Many questions need to be answered, guys. But let me know your thoughts in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and understand it as well, guys.